Howdy, everyone. My name's Nicholas, and welcome to the Headliner Pod Pod. We're a show about podcasts featuring podcasts by podcasters that's hosted by people who help podcasters with their podcasting. On each episode, a few of us folks over at Headliner sit down to play a game that centers around listening to randomly selected clips from over 500 episode submissions we've gotten from podcasters. Why? Well, in order to find what we call Pod Zero. Here are the rules. Each lucky contestant will hear a 60-second podcast clip. They'll then need to pick the correct podcast title out from a lineup of three choices before being shown the artwork for that show. Before we get things on the road, though, let's say hi to each of our contestants for today, starting with Max. Hey. Next up, we've got Jesse. Hello, hello. Followed by Christy. Let's go. And Oliver. Hi, Nicholas. Hey, Oliver. <laughs> God, nobody else said hi to me. That that was so great. Thank you for that. We, we also have Alyssa as our producer with an ad read. Hi, everybody. Nicholas. Thank you. I get a separate, <laughs> I get a separate one. That's good. I like that. Shout out to the host. <laughs> Headliner just expanded our auto posting tool to include Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. With automatic audiograms, Headliner will create and upload podcast videos every time you publish a new episode. Grow your show on social media and YouTube in an easy and effective way with Headliner. All right, cool. And with that out of the way, let's just get the show, you know, started. Max, would you like to go first today? Let's do it. Neat. Like It's like a pain that I've never, ever felt before at that kind of age. And I kind of like, there was a time when I wouldn't even... I'll go to school. It was hard to speak to people about how I was feeling. I was just like channeling all these emotions inside. And there was times when I'd either get angry or get upset because I was just hurting about it so much. And then when I saw something to do like a charity walk, that's kind of where I channeled my energy. And so for me, charity's always kind of been like, I I don't know, I wouldn't say an escape mechanism because that's wrong, but it's rather been Mm -hmm. somewhere where I could channel that extra energy. And then after that, when I went to university, I remember during my placement year, a group of us got together in my technology team and a few of us from the business and we did um, a run for the Great South Run actually for children with leukemia. And then over the years, I've been doing runs and walks, abcells, you name it, for different charities just because I just wanted to give back. All right. So there was our clip and here Mm -hmm. are your choices, Max. Number one, the Dyslexia Life Hacks Show. Mm -hmm. Number two, Dyslexia and us. And number three, D, B, and P's hacking dyslexia. Well, definitely seems like it was about dyslexia. Yes. What are D, B, and P's? Can I get a lifeline on that? Does anyone want to take a stab in the dark? Whatever the saying is, that sounds violent. Not a stab in the dark, a guess, a shot in the dark. Still violent. Okay. Yeah. Anyone? If you have dyslexia, those are the most common or some of the most common things that you get mixed up. Hmm. That makes sense, actually. They do look very similar. Oh, oh, I like that. I mean, a title that's kind of insider and educational. So let's go with that one. Okay. DB and P's hacking dyslexia is incorrect. Sorry, Max. It actually was the Dyslexia Life Hacks show. And this was... Yeah, I mean, it, it does, but I do like the DB and P's thing. I like that it's an in thing. I guess the fact that Alyssa like, could recite that so quickly suggests that <laughs> you must have looked it up or, or known it to write that title. So it should have been a hint. Yeah. Sure yeah, did. that's actually a good point. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess like the cheat there is if we actually can answer the lifeline stuff, don't go with that answer. But that's it. That's, that's it. the trick. Your hack. <laughs> anyway, this was from the episode Being a Neurodiversity Advocate with Akuya Apong. And our show description is This podcast gets to the stories behind the word dyslexia. From engineers to barristers, entrepreneurs to people who develop assistive technology, each episode takes a deep dive into each person's story to find out how they struggled and succeeded with dyslexia, strengths it brings, and the people who support dyslexics. So, 
There you have it. Cool stuff all around. And I really like their podcast artwork. I know it's super simple. It's super straight and to the point and focused. But hear me out. Readability is important, especially when you have dyslexia. So I kind of dig it. So anyway, let's jump on over to our next contestant. Jesse, would you like to go? Yes, I would, Nicholas. Great. I feel like a teacher calling on a student who isn't looking just dead center at the screen. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's a power trip. Busted. <laughs> yeah. Ich fand zum Beispiel auch total süß, dass du gesagt hast, so mit deinem Partner hattest du ja auch eine Situation, wo es die Frage war, hey, wenn du diese Sache machst, dann würde das Kapazität von mir brauchen, darauf entsprechend reagieren zu können. Die habe ich jetzt nicht. Können wir das bitte ein anderes Mal machen, wo ich dann auch entsprechend reden kann, wie ich das mir von mir wünsche? Mhm. Das finde ich ja auch fair zu sagen. Okay, du, ich möchte dir gerne die Aufmerksamkeit geben können und die Wertschätzung, wie es für mich wichtig ist. Und ich weiß, dass ich die gerade nicht geben kann. Und das, also wie cool ist das, wenn wir das den Menschen sagen, so, hey, ich, du liegst mir am Herzen und deshalb entscheide ich gerade diese und jene Sache nicht oder dir zu kommunizieren, das kann ich jetzt gerade nicht leisten. Und deshalb... Und nicht, weil ich nicht will, sondern weil ich einfach gar nicht gehe. Genau, und das ja. find, ich finde das so wichtig, eben dann nicht das passieren zu lassen und dann kannst du nicht wertschätzend und aufmerksam reagieren. Okay, there was your clip. I hope you were listening closely. Every time we get one of those clips that isn't in English, I always go, I should have taken that language in high school. Oh, I so. thought you were going to say, I should have taken that clip out. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I just should have taken it in high school. I don't think that forward, Max. Yeah. So here we like, Wow, that sucks. That really <laughs> sucks. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. Well, lucky for you all, I speak Portuguese. So let's get this. Okay, word. So here you go. That wasn't Portuguese, though. <laughs> that was German. And I transferred out of German my junior year because it was taught by the French teacher who hated me. So I don't know any of it either. Um, so anyway, your choices are, number one, ironically, let's talk about it. Number two, do you feel it yet? And number three, are you feeling it? And I'm assuming that the title is in German. And these are the translations. Yes. You're going to have to. Yeah. All right. I, I, I feel like number three is a SpongeBob quote. And... I feel like two is is also very close to it and is most likely also a smoke screen. So I'm going to go with number one. Let's talk about it. Okay. So unfortunately, you fell for the smoke screen. It, it is. Do you feel it yet? It's the second one. So sorry. So actually, it's not any of those. It's technically spurts du Sean, but, oh. you know, I'm assuming that's what that translates out to. Anyway, I won't from lie. The... I thought oh. the SpongeBob reference was "Are you feeling it?" So it is. You were right, but oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. Never mind. Ignore me then. <laughs> As a person whose TikTok feed is like mostly SpongeBob clips for reasons that escape me, yeah, it it is that. Anyway, the episode this was from is: If you are empty, your connection will also be empty. Twenty twenty four episode one, and our show description is. Feel emotions, accept them, and use them for yourself. I'm assuming that was in German at some point, but you never know. Anyway, cool stuff. And let's just jump over. Let's just, you know, move over to our next contestant, shall we? Oliver, would, would you like to go next? Hi, Nicholas. Hey, Oliver. <laughs> because part of something that I hadn't realized, and it wasn't until actually I went over with Morgan, I, when people say, did you go to America for three days? I went, yeah, I, just, I went to drop Morgan off. And they were like, you know, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. So I'm like, yeah, well, you know. Like he's just at his friend's house. He yeah, right. Over. Over. Um, and he said to me, oh, yeah, we have to do like a, a cultural experience in the US once, yeah. at least once a month, and then upload it to the, the, the CEP program so that they can see that we're actually doing something other than just working. That's what qualifies as a cultural experience program. I was like, so what are you going to do? And he's like, I don't know. But then in swoops Zach Brown and takes yeah. them to the most incredible experiences. So um, I'm really selling it like it's been this whirlwind tour. Do you, do you want me to talk about that? 
I, do, I want to say thank you, first of all, for taking the interview. It's from a parental side of things, Claire. Yeah. All right. Here are your three choices. Number one, oh, Mickey, you're so fine. Number two, bibbity bobbity snacks. And three, the the great British Mickey waffle. Bibbity bobbity snacks. Mm -hmm. I I'm taking that one out. Okay. And could I hear that last one again? The Mickey waffle. Yep, the great British Mickey waffle. The British Bake Off reference, I'm assuming. Well, I think it's a reference to the fact that Alyssa once had a job at Disney World and didn't think I would think of that when reading through the answers. So I'm going to take really? that one out, which leaves us to a reference to that song, Mickey, You're So Fine. Unfortunately, it was incorrect. The correct one was the great British Mickey waffle. No. But, yeah. These were all references. So that's hard. I don't you think know. it was Mickey Mouse, level. maybe. Is Mickey is some other British word, right? Well, now it I is think it another is. British Mickey word. Mouse, uh, it is Mickey Mouse. Oh. There we go. Yeah. Waffles. I think the other word is like the the the, the drug. That's right. Yeah, I'm that's one way. But you okay. also you can also just say you're taking the Mickey out of someone, like you're making fun of them, you're teasing them, Mickey like, so. stopping them from doing drugs. <laughs> I don't know. This what I'm getting from this is that. What I'm getting is that British English is very confusing because taking the Mickey out of someone could mean taking drugs away or making fun of them. Wow, hmm. <laughs> how dark and or, uh, or removing all of their Mickey Mouse fan club apparel and you know That's beating true. them senseless while reprogramming them not to like Disney. So That's there's valid. three possible answers: uh, taking also, their Mickey Mouse ear cap off their head, reclaiming it. Can, can we also just address how, like, nuts it is that we have a Disney food-related podcast, like, a week after somebody tried to sue Disney for, like, his wife dying at a Disney restaurant? Yeah. That's, that like, actually... Like, yeah, I know, you know, but this was, like, literally front-page news this week. I don't know if anyone here heard about that. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. So the TLDR is that Disney's trying to defend themselves by saying that he signed up for Disney Plus at one point and their TOS bars you from suing them. Not even Disney Plus. They signed up for the free trial yep. months ago. <laughs> Never paid for it. Only the free trial. So, so their TOS funny. has some clause. It's like, if you get food poisoning at a restaurant. No, it like says that if you... You aren't allowed to sue Disney, only go to arbitration. Yep. If you've signed up for Disney Plus. But I think that ended up getting, they took that out. I think the yeah. PR from that defense alone was probably so damaging to them that they <laughs> can only imagine. It was, yeah. it was pretty bad. And apparently it was over like 50 grand or something. So they were just like, nope, we're just going to take it out. Let's do it. Sorry. Yeah. But anyway. Back to this. This was from episode 122, New Beginnings, Ready for the Ride. And our show description is, Welcome to the Great British Mickey Waffle. We are a positive band of British voices united in all things Disney. So, there you go. I'm assuming it's just like Disney in general and it's not food related, but there you go. Maybe this I'm is a real. thing in Britain. They have Mickey Waffles at the Disney lands or worlds there. Maybe. Also, shout out for this the cover art. This is this is a nice cover. Yeah, I was going to say, I like the whole Mickey waffle thing just because I never realized how easily you could turn Mickey Mouse's head into like a waffle shape. So, cool stuff. That's anyway. where the idea came to, to Walt. He was eating waffles and <laughs> he had the idea for Mickey. That's, a, that's actually like a pretty interesting theory, Max. It had nothing to do with Oswald the Lucky Rabbit and losing the rights to him. Nothing. Nope. Yeah. Just waffles. anyway. Christy, would you like to go next? Okay. Yes, let's You're... go. Neat. Let's do it. Hey, podcast family. It is your girl, Candidly Kristen. And I'm popping in because, as you can see, the Candid Shop podcast is taking its usual break for the summer. I need to spend some time with my family, my grandies do some vacay stuff, some fun stuff. I'm always working, working, working. So this is my time 
to spend with the family and generally enjoy the fruits of my labor. The show's last episode for the mid-season, before the mid-season break, went up on the 25th of June, and I will be posting best of episodes for your listening pleasure. And if you're tired of listening to the podcast, head over to Audible and check out some of the books that I've narrated. Smoke and Leather is an amazing good versus evil kind of thriller mystery. Okay. Okay. So here are your clip. Here are your options. Number one, let's get real honest with Kristen. Number two, the Candid Shop podcast. And number three, honesty is the best podcasty. Mm. I'm gonna not do honesty is the best podcasty. It's good, but it, it's I don't feel like that that's theirs. I'm gonna go with number mm. two. Okay. Is there a reason? Was it because they said no. it during the show? <laughs> yeah, <I don't... laughs> i'm just gonna go with two okay yeah let's just you're just gonna plead the fifth that's fine it is correct that was the candid shop oh, podcast no! <laughs> welcome back to the show and yeah this was from the episode it's summer break time and our show description is welcome to the candid shop podcast an honest open space where real people keep it candid about a variety of relevant issues topics from relationships to parenting to starting a business and everything in between join me candidly Kristen, for candid that's with a k conversations about all things real and relevant so there you have it good on you and i did it i'm very happy you did it you did it all by yourself with we're zero back, help we're from the show. The, we're, 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 we're back to winning here. Yeah, exactly. So we do have one more clip left. If everyone would like to cover their eyes and band together. We are not judge and jury to how someone do their own spiritual practice. So let's just honor and respect each other on where we are along our spiritual journey because you never might know what battles someone is going through and they might be new to spiritual awakening so we don't want to project any fear into a person while they're still learning themselves that's why i live by this by maya angelo that states do the best you can until you know better and then when you know better you can do better we are all trying to figure this thing called life out so we just got to, you know, respect each other and allow each other to grow in their own time and in their own space. Because like I said, everybody's journey is different. Okay. There is your clip and here are your choices. Number one, connecting the dots. Number two, stars and science. And number three, it's all connected, hosted by Phoenix. Spell check on the name Phoenix. It's Christine funny you, you said that, actually, Oliver, because I can't answer it realistically. Mm -hmm. On the show title, it's spelled P-H-E-O-N-I-X, but on the artwork, it is spelled P-H-O-E-N-I-X. Okay. So then it's that one because the other two didn't mention the words Phoenix, right? Well, meh. So you, <laughs> you think about that for a minute. <laughs> Got him. So it's that one. Let's Dead do to that rights. <laughs> Nicholas. Yeah, that's that's on me. How is that Let's on go. me, Alyssa? You should have put Phoenix on the other ones. I just copy paste from what's in the show notes. All right. Okay. All right, that's gentlemen, what I'm talking we about. It. We got him. Everyone, we yep. got him. <laughs> on a technicality. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. I'm giving that to Christy too because he did just get the other one <laughs> from the show. <laughs> Just you would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for us meddling kids. <laughs> yeah, and your talking dog. Anyone, you, anyone Scooby. have a dog they can just like lift up to the camera really quick? Hold on, I have two. Coda, they're asleep on the couch. Amazing. Wake them up. My oh, dogs are cat. outside. Jesse, I don't know how to break it to you, but that isn't a dog. Crap! <laughs> you got swindled. I uh -oh. gotta return it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, this was from the episode Spirituality Your Way. 
and our description is, it's all connected podcast. It's a show to help you on your spiritual journey. During this time of great awakening, we can all agree that we're starting to question everything. I created It's All Connected Podcast as a safe space where you learn how to connect the dots between spirituality, religion, and science. Join me along this spiritual journey and uncover some of life's mysteries that are hidden in plain sight. House of Alignment is for those seeking discovery and a connection to their higher selves to live a purpose-filled life. Look within so you can never be without. So, there you go. There you have it. Darn it. I've become a Scooby-Doo villain. I'm going to be shoved into the mystery machine or whatever, <laughs> or just arrested. I don't remember how those episodes ever ended. Christy, you're on mute, but it, it seems like you have lore for us. I'm trying. I I, I don't remember to unmute myself ever. <laughs> there's They always end with them just being tied up. I believe there's never police. Right. They just leave him there. Yes. <laughs> no, they we deal got with them. You. Oh, this is too. It wasn't appropriate to show what happens next. But yeah, the, it was that was implied. that Hanna Barbera policy. Yes, the three rules of Hanna Barbera: never show the like people the getting rest. arrested, reuse animation, and make like twenty Flintstones spinoffs. So, there you go. That's how the sausage gets made. Yeah, we have a similar set of rules at Headliner. Yeah, really. No Wait, cops. are we launching a Flintstone spinoff? Oh, many. many. Oh, cool. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> thanks for playing, everybody. Thanks to everyone for listening. And we'll catch you on the next Pod Pod. So, yeah, bye. <laughs>